Okay, so the cards that I cut are identity-specific answers to the cap kid. Um, most of these would typically be read if you're reading an identity-focused ask, um, but a lot of the cards could be read with any affirmative, uh, depending on the role of the ballot, but most of them hopefully care about people of color, so uh, a lot of these cards could be read with any affirmative because they talk about why taking an economic focus without looking at identity actually harms uh, minorities. So let's get into the specifics of the cards. The first card in the file is the Paramour card, and the article I cut it from is called Here's What Economics Don't Understand About Race. The specifics of the card, I think, function pretty well. Just, just to clarify before I get started, um, these cards will be used to respond to mostly on the alternative flow, just because um, depending on what the alternative is, a lot of these cards are going to argue that taking a focus solely on like means of production or just on economic means is problematic because it doesn't take into account um, different identities. So that's what most of these cards are talking about. So they don't really answer the alternative flow because if the alternative, uh, really like these can answer any alternative because most cap alternatives are not taking what these cards would describe as a color conscious approach. So these could be used, um, for that. They could also have alternate uses, just any debate over any sort of politics that isn't color conscious. That's what most of these cards talk about, but there are other specific ones. So for the Paramore card, um, the card gives a lot of examples of like economic disparities between black and white people. So what I mean by that is it talks about, um, it talks about how black Americans are paid less than their white counterparts and just how economics affect different people. So the argument coming out of this card that uh, I use to respond to the alternative would be that colorblind approaches or any sort of universal program to politics, to economic systems, to anything like that uh, are inherently going to exclude racial minorities just because uh, I can read a quote from the card. It says, um, if we're concerned about black-white disparity specifically, we want a race-specific policy. So I think that sums up the card pretty nicely, but the card gives examples of how, like, black people with college education have two-thirds of the net worth of whites who have never finished high school. So just talking about why we need a race-specific action, it gives the example of stratification economics, which just means a focus on specific groups and why that's the only way to, like, have effective um, economic changes. The next card is the Badger card, and uh, the way that I tagged it, I can read it. It says, a focus on deconstructing capitalism because of inequality broadly ignores racial inequality and allows it to fester. An identity-based economic reform would solve race-based oppression and be beneficial to all others as well. So the argument coming out of this card is that not only, uh, well, this would be used to answer alternatives, um, or really just critiques that talk about the inequality that capitalism um, creates because a lot of critiques don't focus on the racial inequality. So the argument in this card is that when you focus on inequality as a whole, you allow racial inequality to grow. Um, it also says that it also says that a, a focus on racial inequality will actually actually have effects on inequality as a whole. So the warrant for that is that um, during the civil rights movement period, there were a lot of uh, like racial inequality gains during that time, as well as income gains for both black and white people. So that uh, seems to prove that taking a race specific um, approach to things also will uh, like benefit everyone involved. Um, I feel like that card is pretty strong. I highlighted one line in yellow just because I, it really stands out to me. I did that for a few cards just because I think it sums up the card nicely and uh, really argues for what you want to 
be making against this alternative. So it says that so much of the conversation about inequality thinks if you deal with inequality generally that you would somehow shrink the level of racial inequality too. So this really would just be used to uh, respond to cap case that focus on like economic inequalities but don't really talk about the race element in them. The next card is the Vise card and it says that uh, the argument in this card is that a politics without identity can't address the challenges that come with that. It really just reiterates that we need a color conscious approach, but this one is a bit more timely and it talks about why um, specifically during the Donald Trump era, we need to focus on identity, especially with economics. It does give um, examples of like turning backs on particular groups like Muslims, immigrants, or people of color, specifically during this climate. Um, this was, the article is a news article. It's directed at Democrats and basically the message is to like make sure Democrats don't like leave identity in the dust just to focus on uh, economics. And it argues that we need to incorporate identity with economics, which really should be the primary answer that you get out of this file and that um, will be used to respond to Ks that don't take an identity or race conscious approach. The next card is the Wingfield card. It's another news article. This one's called The Failure of Race Blind Economic Policy. And the argument in this card is that broad economic movements only benefit white Americans. I really like the phrase that's used in this card uh, affirmative action for white people because I think it really proves that when you take a broad approach um, to addressing inequality you're not solving for any other sort of inequalities that are present. Um, I think it's kind of cool because it gives the example of the GI Bill and why when like white people came back from war they were afforded different benefits um, than like black people who were fighting in World War II, I think the card talks about. Um, so I think that that kind of relates to the topic, but um, it talks about why examples of policies that are supposed to benefit everyone, but really just end up marginalizing people of color further, um, like the GI Bill or like the criminal justice system this card gives the example of. Uh, the line that I highlighted in yellow in this card is, Racial disparities are primarily produced and maintained by colorblind practices. So really the like crux of the argument coming out of this card is just that in order to solve for the inequality that capitalism produces, we need to take a race-focused um, approach and not abandon identity. The next card is the first Ackerloff and Crandon card, and to be honest, I don't especially love this card, but I did include it because it talks about, there's two Ackerloff and Cranton cards. The first one talks about different conceptions of different um, like ideas depending on social context. It gives the example of fairness and it says that in like different countries and different places we have different ideas for what fairness is and it talks about like um, in other countries women and girls are not allowed to vote and things like that. All these examples depend on people's identities and their social contexts. So the argument that I got out of this card, as summed up by the tag, um, just says that abstractly when we think of economics, it fails because identities and social contexts are super important when we talk about reforms because they don't exist in a vacuum and they affect real people. Um, so what I got from the examples in this card is just that we can't really divorce ourselves away from our identity when we create or our, our identity or our social context when we create different policies because like the voting example and other it, like depending on identity and depending on social context, certain things seem like they should be policies when other things don't. So our identities are always linked to uh, policy making, especially economic focus and one side note that I should mention is depending on like what the alternative is, if it is something that's like uh, a grassroots movement or something like that, these cards can be used to answer um, 
movements through the state movements outside of the state or like any sort of movement they can really be spun to whatever um, the case that you're actually hitting so because a lot of these cards were written in the context of like government action but they also do apply to any sort of movement and there are some more movement specific cards uh, later in the file so the next card is the Akerloff and Cranton card number two and this one I think is pretty good it talks about uh, the worker relationship so it's very specific to capitalism and the main argument is that a failure to include worker identity means that economic action can't really solve for day-to-day -day lives when you abstract action you deny the worker and you can't solve for the capitalist relationship so the argument really is just that the K if they don't focus on identity or social context within the alternative. And when I say that when they don't focus on identity, I really just mean that the alternative doesn't like have any context in which they can like affirm the people involved or in which they can recognize that they just say like we should take this action, but it doesn't have any details of the people involved or, you know, who specifically it's going to affect. It doesn't um, take those things into account. So the card also outlines reasons why identity helps with management and that worker identity is important to economic understanding. So it's very specific to capitalism. Um, I think it's a pretty good card. The next card is the Banerjee card. And this card uh, simply summarizes the idea that there's a strong link between identity and utility, which just means that there's a strong link between identities and actually taking action, which means that we should focus in, on identity so that our actions can be effective. It says that we need a social dimension to all of our economic action, but most importantly that identity shouldn't just exist in the abstract. We can't just think of identity as some like thing that exists, but we need to focus on it and really uh, use it to our, ad our advantage. Right now in the status quo, we just are like, oh yeah, we all have different identities, but we're not really making policies that um, are tailored to those identities or uh, make sure that all identities are accounted for. So that's really the argument of this card, um, really just that an identity focus should inform economic decision making. A lot of the cards make a similar argument, but these ones are a little more broad um, away from the racial identity part. So the next card is the Moran card, and it's a pretty simple card, but I think it's fairly useful. It's more of like a definition of identity, and it says that identity is all affiliations, all forms of belonging, all forms of commonality, everything and nothing about personal and social anguish. So what I um, kind of got from this is that identity is very individualistic, which means that it's impossible for us to have movements that fully capture each person's relationship with capitalism or just like how they function within the world. So I think this is a good argument to be made just that we can't focus on identity through movements or through uh, whatever the alternative is because we don't want to boil those down too much. And the impact of this is really the next card. This is the last card and it's a Warren card. I did find it in like an eco-feminism uh, essay but it's really good on this uh, topic and it talks about why movements can be domineering or imperialistic are the words the card uses but just that movements can be movements often impose ideas uh, say that deviant ideas are not allowed co-opt ideas and really when you think about it you can't have everyone's point of view in a movement if you're involved in a movement it has a very broad and boiled down kind of in a nutshell idea. So any movement that the alternative would propose uh, seems to ignore parts of people's identity or even worse, kind of co-opt it, change it, impose it, mold it to what they want. So that's the impact of that. Uh, the thing that I highlighted in yellow for this card is it is important for people of color to define themselves and not be defined by others. This seems to prove to me that we should have um, personal methods for uh, resistance. So this would disprove the alternative just to say that 
movements are bad. It really, really simply, movements are not the best option and that we should allow people to like resist in their own way so that they can accurately, accurately reflect what they want. Um, so that's really the cap identity cards. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to slack me and that's it.